be taking a look at some guided notes with area and perimeter on shapes but don't have all the information. So when we talk about area and perimeter, it's not too hard to, to calculate an area or calculate a perimeter. But sometimes there's in-between calculations that you have to do to set up calculating the area and perimeter. Let's go ahead and take a look. We start by making a copy of the Google Doc. Enlarge my space here a little bit so we can see everything. On this first bit, we just have some reminder formulas. So we're going to be doing a lot with Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem is whenever you have a right triangle, you can say that the two legs, if we call them A and B, could be A squared plus B squared equals C squared, the hypotenuse. If we want to solve for the hypotenuse, we can use this shortcut version. And if we want to solve for a leg, we can use this other shortcut version. These second and third versions are the same formula, uh, just partially solved so that you're looking at just one of the pieces and not squared. So uh, for this one, kite and rhombus, uh, we're going to remind ourselves what the area of a kite and rhombus is. It's just half these two diagonals multiplied by each other. Sometimes we think of this as the base and the height of a rhombus. It's those two measures that are perpendicular to each other. Remember also that in every kite, um, only one diagonal, and in every one diagonal is bisected, and in every rhombus, both diagonals are bisected. This creates four right triangles. Okay, so now in each of these problems that we look at, we're going to calculate the perimeter and the area, but we are also going to mark up this drawing to try and uh, add some information to it that make it easier to calculate the area and the perimeter. So this one, I could calculate the area right away because I have a height and I have a base. So let's take a look at that height and base and we'll open up math.new. Get this over on the right side and this other one on the left side. I notice that the height is three and the base is four and the area of a triangle is going to be equal to the base times the height divided by 2, or 1 half, or 0.5. But really, you're multiplying the base and height, and you're going to multiply by a half somewhere in there. So in this case, I'll take that, put it in there. And I'm going to now just fill in these things. I'll say A equals, well, my base and height is going to be 3 times 4, but we're going to divide that by 2. And I can multiply the 3 and 4, divide the 2, area equals 6. And then I will capture this piece, put it into my area calculation. size it back down so we're kind of keeping the same shape that we had before. Now the perimeter is quite different because it requires that we calculate some diagonal distances and those diagonal distances we're going to be using Pythagorean theorem for. So when I go into here I can see that I'll put some, some pieces in here that this is 3 from A to D and similarly let's make that a little bit bigger for everybody copy and paste that. From DC is going to be 1, and BD is also going to be 3. So I have a, a 3, a 3, and a 1. 
Well, to solve for a, b here, I need to do some Pythagorean theorem. Now, there was a, a piece that said c equals the square root of a squared plus b squared. So we're going to be uh, using this idea a couple of times. The first one is C, we'll call it C1, is equal to square root. And we're going to find these pieces here for AB. Actually, let's, let's call it that. Let's say that AB equals square root of 3 squared plus 3 squared. Now if you instead of using math.new wanted to use like a, a Google Pythagorean theorem calculator, you are welcome to do that. You would simply just search for Pythagorean theorem calculator. And for this first one it says, hey, are you wanting to solve for the hypotenuse? Sure, and then I just type in 3 and 3. And it gives me an answer of about 4.24. So I'll copy that. And I could fill that in here. 4.24. I could even like make it a little bit of a slant. So I know that it's going on that side. Similarly, if I wanted to, I should snapshot this for my work. We'll do that just for a moment here. Then I also need to do a combination with 3 and 1. And that's going to be 3.16. So if I duplicate this, I can duplicate something by pressing Control D. And so this is 3.16. Now I have a more complete picture because with this information, we're going to put these perimeter calculations here. There's one, but I'm going to do another one just shrink these down so they kind of fit into the page there using this calculator to find those extra pieces now I could find my total perimeter my total perimeter would be total equals 4.24 plus 3.16 plus three plus one. It's all the pieces that go all the way around the outside. And if I really just wanted to put that in here, I'd have 4.24 plus 3.16 plus 3.16 plus three plus one. And then now it's just a bunch of put these pieces together. It's 11.4. There we go. Awesome. So perimeter um, requires quite a bit more calculation, you could say, because it's got these diagonal measures. And those diagonal measures, or those not vertical, not horizontal measures, are going to wind up using Pythagorean theorem when they're on a grid like that. OK, let's look at the kite here. So there's. The way that I'm going to be calculating this, I need to calculate these diagonal distances to find the diagonals uh, for the area. But I also need to calculate these other non-vertical, non-horizontal distances to get the, um, how do you say, to get the, the perimeter. So we're going to use that Pythagorean theorem calculator again. Let's add some, some things here. I'm going to start by adding kind of a, a triangle shape. So if I put this triangle there, and I right click and go down to rotate and flip vertically, let's make it see through. Now I have this triangle here. You don't have to add this triangle, but this triangle helps me see what the two measures are to put in to calculate BC. So I know that one leg is 2 and the other leg is 4. So I'll put in 2 and 4, and that gives me about 4.47. So I'll add 
add in 4.47 for that edge there. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. There we go. What's neat, if I duplicate this, is that on a kite, you wind up having the symmetry where that's 4.47, but so is this because it has the same kind of combination as well, two and four for the legs. Now I need to do the legs down here that were three and one. Now we did that calculation not that long ago. Let's copy this one so we can put it into our notes. So we have 4.47, 4.47, and down here we have a one and three kind of calculation. So it's one and three. And that's that 3.16. Okay, so that's 3.16. And I'll do Control D to duplicate, and I'll put it over here as well. So 3.16, 3.16, 4.47, 4.47. Awesome got a lot going on in that picture and we're still not even done but I just need to put some calculations in here first we had how to find 4.47 this 3.16 came in here so I'm just gonna copy and paste it from before because it's the same calculation and I'm also gonna copy another calculation uh, the 4.24 because if you notice I have a triangle here that's three and three to find CE. So CE is gonna be 4.24. And I still need to calculate AE and BD. So let's, you know what, let's, um, let's do that a little bit different actually. Let's show what I'm thinking here. So for this next one, and I'll just kind of make this triangle down here we need to find the diagonal all the way from A to C, and that's gonna be a five by five. So that's five and five, and that's 7.07. .07. And I'm gonna put that over here, because that's one of the two diagonals that we need to multiply to find the area of the kite. Similarly, we need a two by two, and that's gonna be 2.82. There we go. So we have, or it, it rounds it off to 2.83. Now, if I wanted to find the area of that kite, I need those two numbers, 7.07 .07 and 2.83. So I'm gonna do a new tab that says area of kite calculator. And it's asked me for the two measures that go across. And for those, I found 7.07 .07 and 2.83. And that gives me an area of about 10. So I'll take a picture of this. And we're gonna put that in here. So area equals about 10. For this other side, for the perimeter, I need to add up those two things. So let's refresh this page. I'm gonna add up 4.47, 4, 4 4.47, 3.16, So that's just a simple calculation, but let's see what it comes out to. Plus 4.47, plus 3.16, plus 3.16. And all together, that's gonna be about 15.26. So each of these questions is quite involved, meaning it's just got a lot of steps to it. Total perimeter is 15.26.
And then let's take a look at this last one of a shape on a grid. And then the ones down here will be a little bit faster, but we might do that as a separate video. So when I look at this picture, I see four of the same right triangle. That does make it easy in the sense that once I calculate one of these diagonal edges, meaning it's not vertical, not horizontal, it'll be, I just copy it for all the other four. So I notice that the vertical leg is two, the horizontal leg is three. When I put those in, I get 3.60. So I'll insert a text box on here, 3.60. There we go. But now that 3.60 is all of these. So to calculate this one, I can just say, insert equation 3.60, and I could just say times four. I could add it four times, but the same thing as just multiplying it by four. And that gives me the perimeter, or the rhombus. So I'm gonna put that in there. And that's my total perimeter. But I'm also going to capture the Pythagorean theorem calculation. I use 3.60. This rounds it off to 3.61. Either one of those would have been acceptable. Copy and paste. Excellent. There we go. Now for the area, the area again of a kite or a rhombus is just uh, a kite and a rhombus have the same area formula. It's just these two lines that cut across multiplied by each other. So I have AC times BD, and it's gonna divide that by two. I notice that AC is six, and BD is four. And the area of that is just 12. So it says kite, but it's still, a rhombus still qualifies as a kite. So the area equals 12. There we go, those are those three um, for kind of like shapes on a grid. We're going to go through some more down here in the second half, um, looking at something that's not on a grid but still requires us to calculate for missing pieces.